If you're serious about bass fishing, then you know the caliber of bass that can hide underneath docks like these in the heat of the summer all the way through the fall. What's up guys, Ben Melican here for Mystery Tackle Box, and today we're going to talk about four different ways you can approach docks like this to catch some of your biggest bass of the year. You know, before we get into talking about different ways I like to approach these docks, let's talk about why bass like docks. You know, first off, it's shade. So it's a cooler spot for those bass to hang out. And the big thing there is they can hang out there and ambush bait much, much easier. Bluegill, shad, all different types of bait fish love to get in and around docks. And it's one of the best pieces of cover that a bass will use to ambush bait all year long. So the first way I really like to approach docks during this time of year is with a moving bait like this swim jig right here. You know, a moving bait allows you to really make a lot of casts, different presentations, and really see if there's active fish around those docks before you really start slowing down and poking around. You know, as for the rod and reel combinations I like to use with all four of these different techniques, when I'm throwing the swimming jig, I really, really like a 7.3 medium heavy to heavy power rod that has a lot more of a medium uh, to medium fast action. I found that's the best to throw a swim jig. It's nice and slow so that rod can load up when that fish bites. Almost always fished exclusively on 15 pound fluorocarbon. You can't really go wrong with that. Gives you direct contact to the bait because it sinks, plus it has a lot less stretch. So you can really drive that hook home. So let me show you what I'm talking about, starting with the swim jig. You know, when I come up on a dock like this, so we got both sides of the dock come out, you got the boat in the middle. Uh, I want to make a bunch of really quick presentations to pick off an active fish with this moving bait. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw one right behind the boat. I'm going to pull a cast underneath that boat right in the back of that engine, pop it around and as much contact as you can make with the dock, the poles, the boats, anything you can without getting in trouble, of course, is the best. Any type of deflection is gonna cause those bass to react to your bait. Now, after I make that one cast, I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna make a cast on the edge of the dock. So that's gonna pick off any bass that are sitting under that, right on the edge, looking out, waiting to ambush. Next thing I'm gonna do when that cast comes in, hit this back corner of the dock. It's a great way to get a good angle on it. You can pull it all the way underneath the dock. And that gives an opportunity for any bass that's nearby to pop out and eat it, obviously. I will make one last cast with the moving bait. As I'm going past the dock, I'll throw one parallel to that last dock pull and I'll swim it all the way down. I'll pop it around. I'll bang it into any types of dock posts. And if they're not gonna hit it there, there probably isn't one under there that'll eat a moving bait. So as we get up to this next dock right here, let's talk about approach number two, and that is with a flipping bait like a beaver. You know, obviously it's, it's no secret, flipping baits are excellent around docks. Uh, I like a beaver because it has a nice slow gliding action, whether you have muddy water, clean water, I match the color of the bait to the color of the water, uh, and really I do a ton of damage with these things. Bass sit there in that shade and they wait to ambush anything, and when this thing comes gliding past their face, they cannot resist it so really anything you can find on a dock with a ton of shade is an awesome place to throw this beaver you know as for the rod reel line combination i really like for flipping a bait up around docks uh, i like to have a seven foot six heavy power rod with more of a moderate action uh, i think that moderate action allows that rod to really bow up and keep that fish penned a lot of times those fish are flopping around in those docks so you can't just horse them out you got to kind of let them work their way out but it's always good to have that extra power where it shuts off about halfway down the blank uh, and you really do have the ability to move them away from the dock Flipping around docks, uh, to me, always is fluorocarbon. 20 to 25 pound fluorocarbon and a 7 1 to 1 gear ratio reel and even higher than that. I like to have that high speed to catch up if they're moving away from the dock when they bite uh, and obviously get them in the boat as quick as possible. So approaching a dock like this one, I'm a little bit closer than I usually like to get because I just kind of floated into it while I was talking. I'll make a pitch to that front corner right underneath the shore station like that any fish that's sitting underneath there and i got one right there actually he came off see there's uh that's a good way to catch fish if i wouldn't have been talking i would have uh, put this hook right in the top of his mouth but obviously like i was saying the front dock post is an awesome place to pitch your bait on your first flip you know the next flip that guy's probably not going to bite again because he was on for a second i just didn't get a good enough hook in him 
is underneath where the dock post for the uh, shore station meets the dock. Any type of really serious shade up there is a really great place to flip up in there. And really, I fish this bait really, really quickly. For a, a slow moving flipping bait with no action, I'll flip it in there. If it falls once, I'll pop it up a couple times, reel it in, make another presentation. Dock fishing is all about making as many presentations as possible while covering the most water as possible and really fishing through that dock as quickly as you possibly can uh, until you find some fish, of course. Now, once you find some fish, it's time to slow down and finesse them and really pick apart those docks. You know, everyone knows you can skip a weightless bait or you can throw a wacky rig or a drop shot or something at a dock, but I'm gonna give you guys a tip on a bait that will actually help you catch more fish in those situations as well, and that is with a jerk bait. You know, especially as we get into fall, there's so many bait fish in the water, water all summer, whether it's bluegill, and now there's a ton of little shads starting to make those movements to the back of the creeks. A jerk bait is an awesome way to catch those fish, especially if you have a little bit deeper docks with cleaner water. So I match the color of the jerk bait once again to the color of the water. And just like fishing anything else really slow, I make some presentations to those back corners of those docks. And all you're gonna do is twitch it down and let it sit there right in their face for them to look at. A lot of times those fish, they just can't even stand it. What I'm looking for when I'm throwing a jerk bait is kind of like that moving bait with the swim jig. You know, obviously, you're not gonna pitch this all the way up into different types of heavy cover, uh, all the way back behind a shore station or something, but I'm looking for those specific casting angles that allow this bait to get right up underneath that dock and sit in those fish's faces. When I'm fishing this little hunch jerk bait around docks, uh, I always throw it on my typical jerk bait rod, which is a seven foot, a medium power crankbait rod with a slower action. It is a graphite rod, uh, which I like for the sensitivity, uh, but it has a nice slow parabolic action. So that rod can load up, keeps me from tearing the, the little treble hooks out of those fish's mouths. I like it on fluorocarbon. You know, I bump it up to 15 pound tests around docks because once those fish can get you in those docks, they can really cause you some fits if you're using eight or 10 pound line. Uh, and I always use fluorocarbon, gives me direct contact to that bait. It's an awesome option whenever you're fishing a bait that sinks. So one more way I like to approach these docks is kind of sneaky and it's really a way you can capitalize on fish. A lot of guys just blow by when they're fishing the docks and they end up missing those fish. And that's with this popper right here. Any type of topwater popper works extremely well for this. And what I'm looking for with this, it's not gonna be like the jerk bait uh, or the swim jig or any of the other moving baits. I'm looking for walkways that have shade. It's all about shade in this game. Uh, you know, and the great thing is this bite will work well for you early in the morning, but the best time to throw this thing is in the heat of the summer, in the heat of the day, underneath these walkways, just like this one right here. You know, a lot of guys will fish through this dock, they'll flip all the different stuff on the outside, they'll fish the shore station, and then they'll just keep on moving down the bank. Well, you can sneak in underneath, right behind, underneath walkways like this, and that's where some of the biggest bass will hide and get the least amount of pressure. Those fish usually aren't the smart ones, so if you can make an accurate presentation, you can really catch some giant bass. Well, that's all I got today, guys. I hope you learned something. You know, if you use these four different presentations around docks, later this summer, all the way through the fall, I can almost guarantee you're going to catch more and bigger bass. If you want to pick up any of these baits, especially this exclusive Catchco Hunch, go check out mysterytacklebox.com. Thanks a ton for watching, guys.